Disney Studios is one of the most successful businesses in the world. They have cornered the market on entertainment, one of the most lucrative sectors in the business realm. However, it hasn't always been all rainbows and sunshine. There was once a time when Disney had to survive during a time when many people did not. In fact, it was one of the United States' most difficult times, the Great Depression. Before we get into that, I would like to talk about some of the current research that has been done on the company. As for the current research, it has been the company has been quite successful overall because they are using a lot of digital ads and other tools to move in that direction and away from the print and newspaper as even radio ads. In fact, it has made them so successful that they're really only their only competition is themselves. For example, Frozen 2 has just replaced Frozen as the most as the highest grossing animated film of all time. And one of their other ways that they market is by acquiring influential subsidiaries to advertise on. This enables them to reach a wider, wider audience than they would have originally. So for example, you can they acquire ESPN and National Geographic. Those are just two of the things. As for my method for this, this explored how Disney's advertising and marketing plans helped the company survive during the Great Depression. A qualitative historical analysis was conducted by examining poster and newspaper advertisements as well as marketing products over a 12 year period from 1928 to 1940. Paying special attention to the characters and how they were represented and how those characters changed during this time. On November 28, 1928, Disney premiered its first animated cartoon called Steamboat Willie. It also introduced universally appealing Mickey Mouse to movie audiences all over the globe. And it was also the first film to fully incorporate synchronized sound. The introduction of the very simply drawn mouse became a cultural revolution. These were humble beginnings. Critics came to see Mickey Mouse as a blend of several ubiquitous cinematic figures. Charlie Chaplin as his championing, championing of the underdog, the energetic Douglas Fairbanks in his rascally adventure spirit, and also illustrious dancer Fred Astaire for his, the way that he could seem to float across the room. It also, as for the advertisements for this, it featured Mickey Mouse steering the boat. Now the significance of this is in how it was titled. So it's, as you can see, it says Walt Disney's Mickey Mouse in very big, bold letters within Steamboat Willie in smaller letters at the bottom. Because of, because this was Mickey Mouse's first film, it's very unique that he would be the highlighted portion of this whenever he hasn't been in anything else yet. But the marketing techniques worked and Mickey Mouse became extremely successful. Over the years, Mickey was in many different cartoons and the advertising for them became a little bit more advanced with the, the pictures being a little bit more elaborate and had containing more figures than just him. In 1935, Mickey was put into color and Disney released this poster to say this monumental accomplishment that they had. And also the first cartoon that was in color was the band concert also in 1935. As you can see, it has, it resembles different figures. Color wasn't the only thing that changed. Mickey had to have an attitude adjustment. He took, he started out as being mischievous and not the best type of character that you would want your children to watch and parents became concerned. Well, Disney listened and they changed his character to being kind, funny, courteous, all of those things that, that parents typically want their children to become. Because Mickey was associated with these positive things, it made parents more skeptical to the advertising that was going on. Moving into the Great Depression. So in 1929, the Great Depression hit, so I'm moving backwards a little bit. Mickey was in a bunch of films, but not talking so much about Mickey anymore is the merchandising aspect of it. So Disney partnered with Herman K. Heyman, who was an advertising man from Kansas City. 
when they partnered to put Mickey in every house in America. They put him on every product imaginable and helped spread his face all over the world. This made them extremely successful and helped them pay for the first full-length animated film, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Disney wasn't afraid to take chances. He was constantly pushing the envelope and in animation and having high quality products that way his customers would keep coming back and that way the advertising would work. He instilled a, fun, a sense of fun in everything that he did. He also believed in good triumphing over evil, especially during a time when there wasn't a lot of good going on in the world. And that no matter what the circumstances, there would always be a happy ending. Thank you.